Law 13. When asking for help, appear to people's self-interest, never to their mercy or gratitude. If you need to turn an ally for help, do not bother to remind him of your past assistance and good deeds. He will find a way to ignore you. Instead, uncover something in your request or in your alliance with him that will benefit him and emphasize it out of all proportion. He will respond enthusiastically when he sees something to be gained for himself. This is a 6th century fable called the peasant and the apple tree that pertains to this law. A peasant had in his garden an apple tree which bore no fruit but only served as a perch for sparrows and grasshoppers. He resolved to cut it down, taking his axe in hand made a bold stroke at the roots. The grasshoppers and sparrows entreated him not to cut down the tree that sheltered them but to spare it and they would sing to him and lighten his labours. He paid no attention to their request, but gave the tree a second and third blow with his axe. When he reached the hollow of the tree, he found a hive full of honey. Having tasted the honeycomb, he threw down his axe, and looking on the tree as sacred, took great care of it. Self-interest alone moves some men. This man cared not for the safety and well-being of these animals in the tree, but once he found something of further value to him within the tree, the honey, well, the animals were vicariously rewarded. They were rewarded not because he cared for them, but because he cared for himself and the value he would attain from this honey and from this tree. Of course, not everybody is like this, but I believe deep in our core, everybody can be like this. Observance of the law. In 433 BC, just before a war, war called the Peloponnesian War, there was two islands at conflict, the island of Corsera and the island of Corinth. And they were both in conflict because they needed to win over the Athenians to their side, the city of Athens. So whoever had Athens, whoever convinced Athens that they were more valuable, that they could get Athens on their side, would survive. That's it. They would survive. Now I mean survive a war. So this is life and death here. So ambassadors were sent to speak with the Athenians. When the ambassador from the island of Corsica spoke, he was very truthful. He just admitted he hadn't really helped Athens before. In fact, the island of Corsica, he said, had allied themselves with Athens' very enemies. There were no ties of friendship or gratitude between Corsica and Athens. And he, had, he admitted he came out of fear of the city of Corsica in concern for their safety and survival. And the only thing he could offer on this new alliance was shared mutual interest of their navy. Because Corsica had a very large navy and the size of this navy was bigger than Athens, so obviously valuable to Athenians. So an alliance he mentioned would create a formidable force that would intimidate rival states such as Sparta. But that's all they had to offer. That's it. Just the navy. Okay? Now Corinth spoke. Ambassador Corinth spoke. Now he spoke in a way that was much more lively, passionate, and compared to the dry, colourless approach of the previous ambassador of Corus Corsiran. Now Corinth had a very good relationship with Athens. They had done a lot for Athens in the past. He mentioned how, how it would look to Athens if a city put an agreement with a former enemy over a present friend, one that served Athens loyally. He referred to this Hellenic law, the need to repay Corinth for all its good deeds they did for Athens, and he finally continued to list the many services Corinth has performed for Athens and the importance of showing gratitude for that. Now, so basically, guilt in a way, he's trying to guilt him by mentioning all these deeds they've done. At the end of the day, they all voted and they all voted overwhelmingly to ally with the first ambassador, the first city, Corsica, over Corinth. So they chose the city that has was a former enemy had not done anything previously for Athens over the one that had interpretation okay now Corsica and the city and the ambassador understood who they were talking to and you need to understand who you talk to in situations as well because 
they understood that the Athenians were realists of classical Greece. So all the emotional appeals that Corinth, the second group, were trying to convey could not match the pragmatic argument that the first ambassador and first city, Corsura, suggested. The Corinthian ambassador didn't realize that his references to Corinth's past generosity only irritated the Athenians, suddenly asking them to feel guilty and putting them under obligation. People don't want to feel that way. That makes people uncomfortable. See, the Athenians couldn't really care less about past favors, and there's going to be a lot of people you interact with who aren't going to care about what you've done for them. They want to know what you can do for them now. Does that make sense? So it doesn't matter what you did in the past, it matters what you can do now and tomorrow and next year to serve them. There's plenty of people like that who will disregard and not value the things you've done in the past. They will forget in the midst and chaos of their life. When people choose between talk about the past and talk about the future, a pragmatic person will always opt for the future and forget the past. As the Corsarians realized, it is always best to speak pragmatically to a pragmatic person. And in the end, most people are in fact pragmatic. They will rarely act against their own self-interest. Now this becomes a very deep topic and you talk about people's behavior and, and how that's linked to self-interest. I feel like pretty much nearly every single behavior and action we take is innately links to our own self-interest. So I, 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 my initial thought, and I've thought about this before, is that there's really no completely selfless action that one can take. I feel like every action we take, every behavior we exhibit is in some way, in some small, large, whatever way, in our own self-interest. And this includes superficially selfless acts, such as giving your time away for free, giving, donating money to charity, giving to the homeless, you know, whatever. It includes those things. I believe innately, whether people are conscious of it or not, I believe that they are acting in some regard to their own self-interest. Let's topic up for debate. Everybody's going to have an opinion on that. This is mine. Keys to power. You will constantly find yourself in the position of asking for help from those more powerful than you. There is an art to asking for help, an art that depends on your ability to understand the person you are dealing with and not to confuse your needs with theirs. So you need to be perceptive enough to understand the psychology of the person you are talking to. You need to understand them and their motives and why they do what they do and how they think. You need to observe them. You need to be very aware, self-aware of the person in front of you and pay attention to what they do and what they say. Because what they do and what they say are usually going to be two different things and you have to respond accordingly. Most people never succeed at this because they are completely trapped in their own wants and needs. Forget about your needs, forget about what you want. For this moment you need to understand what the person in front of you wants, what their self-interest is and from there you can figure out how to get what you want through that. A lot of people try and contact very successful businessmen, entrepreneurs, investors, whether that be guys like Tim Ferriss or whether it could be guys like Warren Buffett. You can't get in contact with them. But hundreds and thousands of people have tried and a very, very small selection of people get through to these successful individuals who people want to learn from. And they get through mostly by appealing to this person's self-interest and being tactful about the way they convey themselves and what they can offer to this person. Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this shit all the time. He's got a book about it called Jab, Jab, Right Hook. Jab meaning offering something to someone, offering something to someone, repeating that, constantly giving value, and then going for the hook, and then asking. And even then, asking in a way that still appears to, appeals to that person's self-interest. So it's not a completely selfish question. What's beautiful about this is that it can apply to any person, no matter the race, gender, language, 
Every person you deal with is like another culture, an alien land with a past that has nothing to do with yours. Yet you can bypass the differences between you and him by appealing to his self-interest. A key step to this process is to understand the other person's psychology. This is what I said before. Is he vain? Is he concerned about his reputation or his social standings? Does he have enemies you could help him vanquish? Is he simply motivated by money and power? Figure the person out before you make a move. There's a story about Genghis Khan, who was the leader of the Mongols when they invaded China in the 12th century. Genghis wanted to level China. He didn't want to keep any of it. He wanted to destroy the city, set it on fire, let it be done with. But there was a... So a simple man named Chu Tsai had managed to become a trusted advisor for Genghis Khan. And this man, Chu Tsai, really appreciated culture and understood Genghis' psychology and how he thought. And he persuaded Genghis that he would reap riches out of this place, this China, instead of destroying it if he simply taxed everybody who lived there. So, Khan, he saw this wisdom and did as Chu Tsai advised. Okay, Khan then took the city of Kaifeng, another Chinese city. Now he decided, you know what, I'm Genghis Khan, let me massacre all the inhabitants in Kaifeng, as he had done previous cities. And Chu Tsai was like, no, how about this? He told him, the, he suggested, he didn't say no, he suggested that the finest craftsmen and engineers in China had fled to this city. So it's better to put them to use than kill them all. So the city was spared. Thousands of people were spared. And never before had Genghis Khan shown such mercy. Never before. Genghis Khan, this is Genghis Khan, one of the most brutal leaders in Asian history. Genghis Khan was a barbaric peasant who cared nothing for culture or indeed anything other than warfare and practical results. Yet, Chu Tseng chose to appeal to the only emotion that would work on such a man, because there are men like this everywhere. And that emotion he appealed to was greed. Self-interest is the lever that will move people. Once you make them see how you can in some way meet their needs or advance their cause, their resistance to your requests for help will magically fall away. At each step on the way to acquiring power, you must train yourself to think your way inside the other person's mind, to see their needs and interests, to get rid of the screen of your own feelings that obscure the truth. Master this art and there will be no limits to what you can accomplish. Reversal Here's the thing, this isn't going to work on everybody. Some people will see a, an appeal to their self-interest as ugly and ignoble. And they actually prefer to exercise charity, mercy and justice. Which are in fact just different ways of feeling superior and gaining power. Just, it's just a different spin. It's a different illusion self-interest but some people don't like it so you have to tweak it for these types of people it's not everybody can be approached through cynical self-interest some people are put off by it because they don't want to be seen to be motivated by such dirty things they need opportunities to display their good heart and you have to give it to them by understanding understanding them you must distinguish the differences among powerful people and figure out what makes them tick. When they ooze greed, do not appeal to their charity. When they want to look charitable and noble, do not appeal to their greed. Law 13. When asking for help, appear to people's self-interest, never to their mercy or gratitude.